I was lucky enough to get close to the Pazotsky horse. It was really interesting that being truly wild, not even the keepers can touch them. So Mark, can you tell us a bit about the Pazotsky's horse? The, Pre the Pazotsky horse comes from, uh, from Central Asia, through areas through um, uh, Afghanistan, uh, and also parts of the, um, the Gobi Desert as well. And they're the, um, the last true wild horse left today pretty much in the world anywhere. So why are they the last true wild horse? They're quite an, an ancient breed, and they branched off to their own um, branch of um, lineage about um, 10,000 years ago. So why are they called Przewalski's horse? Back in 1850, a man called Nicholas Przewalski found some bones that were from an unknown kind of horse back in those days. He then named this new horse after his own last name. They're therefore called now the Przewalski's horse from Mongolia. Are there any left in the wild? Sadly, no. These things are pretty much ex extinct these days back in the wild as well, and, and therefore any horse born inside the area here is a, is a big success. So what are the main differences between Przewalski's horse and the domestic horses? Uh, pretty much their size. Uh, these things are quite a small horse by their stature anyway. And also there's small differences too with them, you know, things like, you know, their ear length. So do these horses eat the same foods as domestic horses? These things being a horse have the same basic diet as most other equids too. And what's an equid? Equids are pretty much horses, so things like, you know, zebras and donkeys too, they're all pretty much equids, they're all pretty much of that same basic horse family. So do these horses get winter coats? They do indeed, yes. Winters here get uh, quite cold and they keep warm by growing a nice shaggy coat too during winter, those winter months. Thanks, Mark. I learnt a lot about these equids. My pleasure. Nice to meet you.